Governor J.B. Pritzker signing a measure into law that is pro-union and employer groups raising concerns. It is Illinois in Focus Daily. I'm Greg Bishop. Uh, the governor had two events yesterday, uh, one dealing with a uh, worker free speech issue that uh, is, is pro-union. Uh, but uh, again, business groups pushing back on that, but also the governor taking time to highlight the use of sustainable aviation fuel for jets, passenger jets. United joining the governor at Chicago O'Hare uh, to talk about that. But let's go ahead and get into this bill uh, that uh, was was signed yesterday by the governor, uh, and that is uh, prohibiting captive audiences uh, is how they characterize it. Prohibiting captive audiences. So go to thecentersquare.com and uh, follow along here. Uh, Pritzker signs captive audience prohibition that employer groups called unconstitutional. Uh, and this is uh, some, some kind of uh, going back uh, a bit, uh, even to this spring because of Senate Bill 3649. So a measure that makes it a violation for Illinois employers to hold what are called captive audience meetings to discuss religious or political issues is now law. Business groups say it's unconstitutional. Without explaining the measure, uh, the governor signed Senate Bill 3649 Wednesday at a AFL-CIO event. Here is the governor. Uh, not really explaining the measure, just really rallying labor to uh, discuss all of the different things that uh, they've done in Illinois for the labor movement. Here's uh, the governor. And workers. We're in a new era for the Illinois economy, one where workers are finally at the center of that economy. From the Pullman strikes to the Haymarket affair to, to today, it has been the working men and women of this state that have led the charge of progress, not just within the state of Illinois, but across the entire nation. At pivotal moments throughout our history, when civil rights and workers' rights and voting rights and democracy were under siege, it was the Illinois labor movement that answered that call. Illinois workers answered that call. Illinois unions answered that call. Now, today we take another step forward to protect workers in our state. And again, uh, the governor did not necessarily go into any detail about what he was signing there, just doing it at the um, uh, AFL-CIO event in Chicago. Uh, but going back to earlier this year, when they first were discussing this measure in a Senate committee, uh, you had Tim Dre with the AFL-CIO explain in general terms what this measure ultimately does. Senate Bill 3649 will allow workers to opt out of non-work related meetings called by the employer to discuss political or religious matters. The reasoning behind the, this proposal is simple. Workers go to work to earn a paycheck and are employed to earn a profit for the employer, not to be indoctrinated by their employer's beliefs. Again, they go to work for a paycheck and to make a profit for the employer, period, not to be indoctrinated by anyone's religious or political beliefs. So what does this really come down to? Uh, it seems to boil down to that some employers want to hold meetings for their employees to understand what a union could do to the workplace, um, both maybe positive and negative but the unions don't want to have employees forced to hear what they say is anti-union propaganda or anti-union rhetoric. Uh, so the law says that you can't mandate somebody uh, uh, attend a employer meeting that's gonna talk about politics or religion. Now there are some uh, exemptions they, they pulled out of there. For instance, the General Assembly as an employer is not impacted by this. So. You know, they've got to deal with politics all the time. And there's nonprofit groups that uh, are exempt from this as well, except for 501c3s, I, I believe. Uh, but regardless, uh, you've got um, the business groups earlier this month in March talking to a Senate committee uh, about the problems here. The National Federation of Independent Businesses, Noah Finley, says that this is a uh, constitutional violation. We are not here to debate whether unionization is good or bad. That is for the workers to decide. But to make the decision, they need access to the full range of information, something this legislation would hamper. The threat of civil liability for constitutionally protected speech 
would place a chilling burden on an employer's freedom of speech, resulting, at best, in self-censorship and reducing employee access to important information and perspectives. One must question how free employers will feel to engage in protected speech with the threat of civil liability hanging over the heads, hanging over the heads like the famed sword of Damocles. In addition to the chilling burden on protected speech, this legislation also contravenes the National Labor Relations Act, abridging employer rights as recognized under federal law. So um, Alec Laird with the Illinois Retail Merchants Association uh, elaborated a bit on that, where they say that this measure could violate the National Labor Relations Act, and other states have uh, run into some litigation over this. So Connecticut passed its law in 2022, and a lawsuit immediately followed that argued the law is preempted by the NRLA. The court recently denied the state commissioner's motion to dismiss that lawsuit, and it continues. New York, Minnesota, and Maine passed legislation in 2023. Minnesota law has already been challenged. A lawsuit will be filed shortly to challenge New York's law. Finally, Washington just passed its law this year that will become effective June 5th, 2024. It appears that the NR NRLRB's own rulings and recent case law that the legislation is preempted by federal law and unconstitutional restriction of free speech. Irma would suggest that it may be a better course of action to ascertain the outcome of the pending legislation so that the parties can have an informed discussion about the proposed mm -hmm. language moving forward. Again, um, a lot of litigation in other states about this, uh, but as you've got the governor touting a refocus of the economy on the worker, um, let's talk just briefly about economies here. Uh, and Illinois has historically lagged the rest of the nation when it comes to unemployment rate. I uh, just saw some headlines uh, today. Chicago's unemployment rate continues to lag. Uh, a lot of other big cities in Illinois, uh, the unemployment rate has ticked uh, a, a full percentage point uh, up to uh, over the national average regularly, almost. For instance, back in the uh, Great Recession, it took 10 years plus for Illinois to get back to pre-Great Recession uh, employment. Uh, when it, the, the, the pandemic, uh, it took Illinois a little bit longer to get to pre-pandemic levels of employment than other states, uh, and especially states around us, uh, when you talk about the manufacturing inflow and outflow, when you talk about the population inflow and outflow, Illinois' economy uh, definitely uh, has uh, some struggles uh, compared to other states. So uh, a lot can be said about all of this, uh, but of course, uh, just keeping you posted on uh, what's happening in your neck of the woods here in the land of Lincoln. It is Illinois in Focus Daily. Greatly appreciate you guys being here each and every weekday morning. Uh, it really is uh, an honor to, to bring you this type of information uh, from all perspectives and just putting it out there on the table so that you can uh, digest it and make up your own mind. Be sure to go to thecentersquare.com Get the latest headlines from what's happening in Washington, D.C. to Washington State and right here in the land of Lincoln. Uh, but you can also uh, find America's Talking Network on YouTube to wake up with us each and every weekday morning here with Illinois in Focus Daily. Uh, have yourselves a great day. Happy Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. We'll see you then. So